All right, guys, it is a, the cold season again. It is winter, and I thought today it would be worth talking about the truck survival knife that you should consider owning. Now, this is my slightly bastardized Glock field knife, and you guys can see here it has some roughness on its coating, but we're going to talk about and break down what I did exactly to this knife, and also we're going to talk about the Glock survival knife, and it's best application in my opinion. Now, of course, this is not a new knife to me. As you guys can see, it's been well loved, but um, in all seriousness, this knife is not super new to me, but for a while, I have been testing this knife, playing with it, and we're gonna be talking about, I think it's primary or maybe most useful application, and that is as a truck survival knife. Now, like I said, this is a Glock. I believe this is an 81. Yeah, it should be an 81 because of the whole root saw thing on the top of it, but this is a field knife from Glock. Yes, the same people who make handguns also make knives, and they actually made knives before they made guns. And originally, some of the lore to this guy was that, of course, it was designed to be the bayonet for the Steyr AUG. Of course, the AUG being a um, produced or Austrian-produced military service rifle. Now, of course, that never really came to be, so this never really came to be, so that is kind of how we got here. However, these knives are still incredibly cheap, they are very mass-produced, and they do have some good application. Now, this thing definitely is more military leaning, more military oriented. This is designed to be, once again, originally a bayonet. So you have these kind of, you know, guards for your fingers and for your hand as a whole. You have this root saw that is not very pleasant to run your fingers over, but also not super aggressive and useful. Um, it's overall a very conflicting knife because there are a lot of cool features to it, but overall there are definitely some uncool features. Now, overall, when it comes down to it, I don't necessarily hate this root saw. I think it's good actually for notching and doing some light work that a saw can do. Of course, it's not going to be perfect because most saws have to emphasize in being as thin as possible to cut through material. So whenever you have a saw back on a knife, definitely be skeptical of it because saw backs on thick knives obviously negate that whole philosophy of being a saw and being as thin as possible to slice through things as saws do. However, this knife does have some good merits to it. Once again, it is a near full tang knife, not completely full tang, so that means you have an enclosed plastic handle or polymer handle in this case, keeping your hand free from being super cold in wintry environments. And also it does get, do a pretty good job at shock absorption when you are smacking on this thing. Now, one of the biggest things I would say that can honestly make or break this knife is its grind from factory. From factory, this thing has a very thin, very dull grind to it. So that is why you guys see it kind of roughed up here is because I did a kind of two-staged grind to this blade. First, off, I took a Dremel to it with a coarser sandpaper um, wheel and I pulled this grind back. And I wanted to do that because, of course, pulling the grind back, making it a little bit wider and a little bit more shallow, gives this better actual knife skills and cutting things and also too makes it a little bit easier to sharpen which is obviously the next step and the great thing about the glock field knife is that these are made out of 5160 spring steel which is honestly and unfortunately a kind of rare steel to find on knives today but it is a high carbon spring steel and the nice thing about that is one it's a high carbon spring steel so it's springy it's not going to break or snap um, as easily as other steels can can or will, and two, it is also very easy to sharpen. So I put it on my Spyderco Double Stuff, which is this little dual ceramic sharpener. Absolutely love these guys. And I hit it with this dual ceramic sharpener, brought it up to a pretty decent edge. It's not going to, you know, like whittle hair per se, but once again, as a truck survival knife, this thing is going to be able to carve wood feather stick and do all of those nice knife tasks. Overall, I was able to, you know, kind of grind down on it, get it to a good edge or fieldable edge, and then actually sharpen it up. And once you do that, once you kind of thin out that initial 
initial bevel, it will honestly improve the cutting performance of this knife a lot. That's primarily because this knife is a very thin overall thickness, once again, kind of designed to be more like a bayonet. And so with that in mind, um, you know, when they put their initial grind and bevel on this knife, there's a lot of material in the very cutting edge because it's a very thin overall blade. So you really have to kind of thin out that material at the cutting edge to make this a better cutting instrument or tool. So as far as it goes, um, other things that I'm not a huge fan of, don't love this back, you know, kind of finger groove, but one smart thing that they did do is as you can see, obviously traditionally with a finger groove, it is, you know, more kind of just projecting out. Whereas with this top guard, they kind of projected it toward the edge. Now, hypothetically, this could be for some fast fighting, you can trap knives or, you know, blades with this and all that kind of garbage. But realistically speaking, they probably did this to re reduce the overall height of your finger or your um, top guard here so that you can put your thumb out over the um, top of it with a good degree of ease. Now, of course, that is still there. And if you try hard, you can certainly still touch it and it can become a hot spot. Now, of course, there is also this root saw here, but to be fair, like most saws, it only cuts in one direction. So, so long as you have your thumb in a good position and you're not really pulling back on this, like so long as you're not going this way, but you're going this way with your pressure, it's honestly not that uncomfortable. Now, would I want to sit there for an hour like this and do this? Probably not, but realistically speaking, it is okay. And it's honestly passable, especially if you have gloves on, which as a part of a truck survival kit, you should have some gloves in your truck. It's just kind of a no brainer. So anyways, as far as this goes for a truck survival knife, the things I like about it, it's cheap, it's very easy to make it field ready. It's a good steel, 5160 spring steel is tough. It's going to bounce back. It's going to allow you to do a lot. The root saw is not the worst, but it's not the best. You can still strike ferro rods off of it. And it's a decent overall truck survival knife. It's cheap enough that if it gets lost or damaged, you're not really gonna cry about it. And also two, it's realistically useful enough that you can um, use it in the field. Now, other people have made the recommendation and so I will pass it along that. I do believe, like most people, I would recommend wrapping this handle with some form of kind of sticky or grippy tape and maybe not quite wrap it, but at least put these or put some like traction tape, maybe skateboard tape on either side of this handle. And that is so that when you grab it and especially, or I should say when you're holding it and especially when you're batoning, this thing because, or this knife, because it has such a round handle Handle. It has the high tendency to want to slip and shift like this as you're trying to hold this handle. So you may want traction tape on here to help mitigate um, the risk of that happening. So just another kind of aside or kind of forewarning um, that you may want to do with this particular knife. However, overall, when it comes down to it, it's a decent truck survival knife it's probably not my favorite there are some really good options out there but it is a truck survival knife that for sure if you're looking for extras kind of backups if you're just looking for a blade to stick somewhere and do you don't really care if it gets damaged lost or anything like that it's not a bad uh, knife for those particular instances anyways guys hopefully you enjoy the video as always god bless and i'm out